Welcome to today's study of Micah, chapters 4 and 5, titled, What is God Planning for the Future? Always know that Jeremiah 29, 11 was God's promise to the people of Israel, and it is God's promise for us today. He has had one goal, and he always has a plan to achieve it. Jeremiah 29, 11 is God saying through the prophet, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. It's a plan to prosper you and not to harm you. It's a plan to give you a hope and a future. We wonder sometimes why all that Micah is prophesying came to pass, why God couldn't forgive. And it's because he had a new plan. And we're going to see that in the passage today. Remember, Israel had found a false security in their wealth, in their power, in believing that their promises from God were for their genetics and not for a, a faith relationship, not a blessing of their faith relationship with him. God's promises of blessing and protection would remain, but only for the remnant. And it wouldn't always remain for their earthly lives, but they would always know that his promises would remain for all eternity as they lived with him in heaven. So in this passage we look at today, the first verse begins with the phrase, in the last days. In this particular way, the last days refer to the times that the last covenant God would make with his people would be established through Jesus Christ. And the promises are promises for that time. And so he begins, Micah begins saying, in the last days, the mountain of the Lord's temple will be established as the highest of the mountains. It will be exalted above the hills and peoples will stream to it. Many nations will come and say, come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the temple of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways so that we may walk in his paths. The law will go out from Zion, the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Micah has just discussed how the temple would be brought to ruin, brought to rubble in the previous chapter. But now he speaks of the temple being established once again. And it would be the highest of mountains, the highest place, not geographically, but spiritually. And peoples would stream to it. Many nations would come and say, this temple, this exalted place, would not be only for those with Jewish genetics. It would be for all people. So that all would say, come let us go to the mountain of the Lord, to the temple of God, to the God of Jacob. This temple would be for everyone. This new covenant would be for everyone. And he's speaking of Jesus when he says he will teach us his ways so that we can walk in his paths. The law did go out from Zion, the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And speaking of this Messiah, Micah says he will judge between many peoples and will settle disputes for strong nations far and wide. They will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will not take up sword against nation, nor will they train for war anymore. I wish I could say that the new covenant relationship God gave us through Jesus had accomplished that. But you can know that was always God's plan. You can also know that God's plan will one day ultimately be established, and those words will one day be true. All nations are welcome to think of themselves as the people of God if they will just step into this new covenant relationship with him through his son. 
Jesus was given to Zion and went to Jerusalem for one purpose. He wanted to bring salvation to all people. And if all people were faithful believers, there would be no reason for war. If everyone was faithful, verse 4 would begin. He says, everyone will sit under their own vine and under their own fig tree, and no one will make them afraid. For the Lord Almighty has spoken. All the nations may walk in the name of their gods, but we will walk in the name of the Lord, our God, forever and ever. Whatever happens in this world, we can sit under the knowledge that we have our personal relationship with Jesus. We belong to God as his child. And even though things happen in this world, we need not be afraid because God has spoken. The Lord Almighty has spoken and given us his promise that even though nations may walk in the name of their gods, small g, we know we can walk in the name of the Lord who is our God forever and ever. There's never a day that you and I as Christians need to doubt that our salvation is assured. We are safe. So what's God's intention for his new covenant relationship that will end in providing heaven for all peoples? Micah says in verse 6, In that day, declares the Lord, I will gather the lame. I will assemble the exiles and those I have brought to grief. I will make the lame my remnant. Those driven away a strong nation. The Lord will rule over them in Mount Zion from that day and forever. As for you, watchtower of the flock, stronghold of daughter Zion, the former dominion will be restored to you. Kingship will come to daughter Jerusalem. Micah is saying there's a new king coming to Jerusalem and the faith of God's people will be restored. He will bring those that were once lame, his remnant from Israel, and they will once again become a strong nation. The Lord will once again rule over them on Mount Zion from that day and forever. But he says to those that will be taken captive by the Assyrians, you are the watchtower of the flock, stronghold of daughter Zion. The former dominion will be restored because there's a new king coming. And their future will be dependent on their trust in God's new king, his son. Why do you now cry aloud? Have you no king? Has your ruler perished that pain seizes you like that of a woman in labor? Writhe in agony, daughter Zion, like a woman in labor, for now you must leave the city to camp in the open field. Micah is telling them again, you will leave the Holy Land. You will be taken captive. He says, you will go to Babylon, which is the word for exiled from God's presence. There you will be rescued. There the Lord will redeem you out of the hand of your enemies. There was always a promise given to the people who were faithful, like Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. There were always the faithful that dwelt in that land of captivity. And these were the promises for them. There would be a return. God would win. God would restore his people once again. But Micah says, but now many nations are gathered against you. They say, let her be defiled. Let our eyes gloat over Zion. But they do not know the thoughts of the Lord. They do not understand his plan that he has gathered them like sheaves to the threshing floor. How often does scripture describe the gathering of God's people as the harvest? 
as those who would be kept, those who were the true remnant would be kept, brought together and saved. The harvest has always been God's purpose. This earthly life was just our road to heaven. And so Micah says, rise and thresh, daughter Zion, for I will give you horns of iron. I will give you hooves of bronze and you will break to pieces many nations. Remember that iron and bronze were the most valuable metals of this day because they were strong. They were able to break other things and be unbreakable themselves. And so he says, you will devote their ill-gotten gains to the Lord, their wealth to the Lord of all the earth. God's purpose and plan will always be to turn people toward faith in him over all of the things of this world, to look to him for their salvation and be given his strength. Chapter 5 begins with a messianic prophecy. Micah says, marshal your troops now. City of troops for a siege is laid against us. They will strike Israel's ruler on the cheek with a rod. That is a symbol for shame. It is a symbol of knocking out the ruler of Israel that's current. But he says a very important verse. In fact, this is the verse that would one day lead the wise men to find the baby Jesus. Verse 2 says, But you, Bethlehem Ephrathah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come one for me who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from old, from ancient times. From Bethlehem will come a ruler over all Israel. Israel meaning the people of God. And this one has origins that come from old and ancient times. Remember the Apostle John began his gospel saying, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. All things were made by him and through him, all things were made. Jesus existed from the very beginning. And Micah has just promised that he would become the ruler of all of God's people. Therefore, now, Israel be abandoned until the time when she who is in labor bears a son and the rest of his brothers return to join the Israelites. He will stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they will live securely, for then his greatness will reach to the ends of the earth. Remember, Israel would look for an earthly king. But had they studied Micah's prophecy, they would have been more likely to recognize the Son of God when he stood in their midst. The nation of Israel, along with that covenant God had made, with the people, is going to be abandoned. And it would be abandoned until the new covenant came, when she who was in labor would bear a son and the rest of his brothers would return to join the Israelites. Jesus would stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and all of those who walked with Jesus would live securely, for then his greatness would reach who? The ends of the earth. And verse 5 says, and he, referring to the future king, the Messiah, 
and he will be our peace when the Assyrians invade our land and march through our fortresses. We will raise against them seven shepherds, even eight commanders, who will rule the land of Assyria with the sword, the land of Nimrod with a drawn sword. He will deliver us from the Assyrians when they invade our land and march across our borders. The hope that would keep the faithful walking with the Lord would be the shepherds that would remind them that God had promised them a Messiah, that God would never leave them without his blessing, that God would always fight for his people. Assyria is in this Um, This was a literal nation that took the nation of Israel, but Assyria can also be thought of as any nation that is an enemy of God's people, God's truth. The remnant of Jacob, God's faithful, will be in the midst of many peoples, like dew from the Lord, like showers on the grass, which do not wait for anyone or depend on man. The remnant of Jacob would be established in these foreign lands, and yet they would bring with them God's word, knowledge of who God is. If you've ever wondered how the wise men in Persia came to follow a star in order to find the Messiah, know that it is a fulfillment of these words right here. Because the nation of Israel would become a nation of God's people, God's faithful, the remnant. And they would, in turn, bring God's faithful to knowledge of him. The remnant of Jacob will be among the nations in the midst of many peoples, like a lion among the beasts of the forest, like a young lion among flocks of sheep, which mauls and mangles as it goes. No one can rescue. There will be a power among God's enemies, and it's his word. It's the remnant of Jacob who will live among this foreign nation, and yet they will carry on God's word. I love that he used the illustration of lions. Remember Daniel being thrown in the lion's den. He said, your hand will be lifted up in triumph over your enemies and all your foes will be destroyed. God through the prophet Micah reminds God's people forever that they will be protected. There is victory in believing in what God is doing among the nations. There is victory in finding God at work in the world. And there's victory in the Messiah that would come. And that's the promise of Micah to all of God's people of that day. The Lord says, in that day, I will destroy your horses from among you and demolish your chariots. I will destroy the cities of your land and tear down all your strongholds. I will destroy your rich craft and you will no longer cast spells. I will destroy your idols and your sacred stones from among you. You will no longer bow down to the work of your hands. I will uproot from among you your Asherah poles, and then I will demolish your cities. I will take vengeance in anger and wrath on the nations that have not obeyed me. Through the prophet, God promises that he will allow the vengeance to come on the land of Israel. He will allow vengeance on both God's people and those that were not because he wants to not only destroy the land that lacked faith, the leadership that lacked faith, the prophets that lacked faith. He wanted to uproot that covenant. He wanted to demolish anything that would allow for the worship of false gods 
in that land. And so they were removed. And everything that was a promise of the Holy Land was demolished. But what was never demolished is God's promise that he would be with his own people. They would always have his presence. His vengeance was going to be on those that had not obeyed him. There would be a Messiah, and he wouldn't be an earthly king, but he would reign in heaven as king for all nations. God's wrath is on those who do not obey, but his blessing would be on those who would make his son their king while on earth as he reigns in heaven. And that's why Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our God, who art in heaven, honored, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God's will will be done and accomplished through his people, always. God's will will be accomplished in each of our lives as well if we will just make him our king, our Messiah King. Oswald Chambers wrote one of the most famous devotionals ever written called My Utmost for His Highest. He was a remarkable person who preached to students at a seminary. He died young and his wife put together that devotional that has been around as long as I can remember. Oswald Chambers said, Jesus Christ's outward life was deeply immersed in the things of this world, yet he was inwardly disconnected. The one irresistible purpose of his life was to do the will of his Father. Jesus was both man and God, and he submitted all that was human for the one purpose of his life, which was to do the will of his Father. May all of us pray like Jesus taught us to pray, saying, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. May God's purpose be fulfilled in our life. May he be king of our choices, our thoughts, and may we submit to his will and his purpose in our life, just like the prophet Micah did. May our daily prayer be for Jesus to be our Messiah King and use our lives to help others accomplish his purpose. I'll see you next time.